let's let's keep talking about this disinformation board if we could. The fact sheet from DHS on the disinformation board that you recently released defined disinf- disinformation this way: false information spread with the intent to deceive or mislead. You agree with that, I assume. That's your definition. Yes, I believe that's the definition um, the on the fact bro- sheet. Broadly and broadly um, okay. uh, held. And, and uh, you think it's important that the U.S. government combat this dis- disinformation, right? I mean, you've testified to that. Senator, I, uh, what I testified to is when disinformation um, threatens when national security. Threat to the security of our homeland, then we are engaged. Okay, all right, good. And I, I presume that's why you've set up this disinformation board. So let's, let's have a look at the person whom you've selected to head this new disinformation policing effort, and let's look at what she has been spreading online. She has, for starters, consistently misinformed the public about the Hunter Biden laptop story and spread the lie that it was Russian propaganda. Here she is on October the 14th saying, disinformation experts say there are multiple red flags that raise doubts about their authenticity, meaning the emails, including questions about whether the laptop actually belongs to Hunter Biden. Of course, as it turns out, that's totally false. This laptop has been authenticated both by government entities and by independent news organizations. She went on, Here she is again, the same interview, saying that we should view it, meaning the laptop and apparently the whole story, as a Trump campaign product. That is also a lie, which you know. You know it's not a Trump campaign product. It never was a Trump campaign product. But she didn't stop there. Here she is on October the 22nd uh, in 2020, this time taking to social media, saying that Biden notes 50 former NATSEC officials and five former CIA heads that believe the laptop is a Russian influence op. Laundering here, using government, former government officials to launder the lie that this was in fact a Russian influence op, which of course is not true at all. Here she is also on October the 22nd, still on social media, this time saying, The emails don't need to be altered to be part of an influence campaign. Of course, they weren't altered. Voters deserve that context, not a fairy tale about a laptop repair shop. Of course, we know the only person in all of this telling a fairy tale is Ms. Jankowitz on social media repeatedly for days and days on end. How about a different set of examples? She has consistently spread false and misleading claims about the Steele dossier, which we now know was actually itself a piece of Russian propaganda. Here she is on December the 8th, 2017, responding, by the way, to United States Senator. She's responding to Lindsey Graham. She says to him, your party funded the dossier first. The FBI was investigating Trump since the summer, but didn't make it public. The American public deserved to know. This is false. The people who funded the dossier were the Clinton campaign, which we now know. This has been verified. This is outright falsehoods. But she didn't stop there. Here she is on August the 7th, 2020, promoting Christopher Steele, the stooge who helped launder Russian propaganda, including lying to the FBI about it. Here she is lauding him as a trustworthy and legitimate source. Classic disinformation. She says she listened to this last night. Chris Steele, yes, that Chris Steele, providing great historical context about the evolution of disinformation. At every turn, Mr. Secretary, she has used social media and the public to launder propaganda herself. She's also advocated for law enforcement to be involved in policing speech online. Here she is in an NPR interview this year, just a few weeks ago, April 16th, 2022. This is Ms. Jankowitz, and I quote, I shudder to think about if free speech absolutists were taking over more platforms. We need platforms to do more, and we frankly need law enforcement and our legislatures to do more as well. And then she goes on to praise legislation in other countries that involves policing speech. Or here she is on February 17th of 2021 saying that the free speech versus censorship dichotomy is false and calling herself in a TikTok video the Mary Poppins of disinformation where she sings that members of Congress shouldn't be permitted to spread misinformation on the floor and otherwise taking to task those who propagate views 
she disagrees with. Here's my question to you. If your intent was to combat misinformation online or in the government, why on God's green earth would you nominate someone who is a human geyser of misinformation? Um, Senator, um, I, I am ultimately responsible for the hiring of Ms. Jankowitz uh, to be the executive director of the Disinformation Governance Board. In my capacity as the secretary, why did you I, choose I bear, her? I bear responsibility uh, for that. Um, I understand that she is uh, an expert in disinformation. Yes, indeed, will, spreading it. And she will have an obligation to execute her responsibilities in a nonpartisan way. Were you aware of these? Were you aware of this information when you chose her? Everything I, I've just shown you. I was not. Why, how could you not be? Uh, uh, Did you do any research on her, Senator? Senator. Uh, I will not uh, discuss the internal workings of the hiring process. You won't? Of the Department of Homeland Security. Well, let me ask you about this. Uh, are, I'm sure there are documents pertaining to this board, minutes of meetings, communications about who would serve on the board. Will you release those to this committee? Um, uh, Senator, there are not uh, yet this this governance board. Wait a minute. There are, no me there are no minutes of meetings about this board? It is not yet. You've not uh, created any records? It has not yet begun its work. Y you've hired her. You surely had deliberations about hiring her. The the, the board has not yet met. You, you had deliberations about hiring her, though, correct? Uh, I did not, uh, Senator. You just said I that you are solely responsible for hiring her. In my capacity as the secretary... I bear responsibility. You're telling me that there are no documents associated with this board? I, that, I, that I don't. You asked for meeting minutes. minutes. of meetings, documents pertaining to the board, any records of communications about who would serve on the board. Will you turn those over to this committee? Any document of, reta, pertaining to this board, will you turn it over to this committee? Senator, we, we owe you documents with respect to the work of this board that already are in existence. So you'll turn them all over? You will turn those documents over to this, to this committee? Unless there is a legal basis for us not to do so. Uh, Senator, I will follow up with my uh, colleagues on that. Did you, did you, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. You started to say yes, but, th but then you just, you no, just, no, turned, I is that a yes or is that a, that's a maybe, I'll get back to you later. Um, Senator, I owe openness and transparency with this committee, and we will produce the documents that you have requested unless there's a legal prohibition from uh, us doing so. Unless there's thank you. Thank, thank you. Here, here, if I could just conclude, Mr. Chairman, here, here's, here's the last thing I'll say on this, Mr. Secretary. We have 2 million unauthorized migrants who crossed the border last year during the calendar year. We have 245,390 illegal crossings just this year in the Rio Grande Valley. And your priority is setting up a board and hiring someone who has gone to TikTok to talk about stopping speech she doesn't like, who has mocked voters, supporters of the last president, that has been your priority. To say that your priorities are misplaced, I think is a dramatic understatement. And the time has come, I think, Mr. Secretary, for you to resign. 